Hey there, Carnage Cravers. Welcome back to Carnage Corner. I am Ken Carnage, and it is time for the Royal 2020 Royal Rumble review. I want to welcome you back to my cha channel. I'm sure some of you haven't been here since the last decade. No? Okay. Uh, anyway, so, first pay-per-view of the year. Well, not counting Worlds Collide, which I unfortunately was not able to uh, to watch as of yet, had to go break the rocks, if you know what I mean. So, we're going to get into the Royal Rumble, starting on the kickoff show. Our opening match, a match between Sheamus and Shorty G, which I hated the idea of the name Shorty G at first, but I have to admit it is actually growing on me. Uh, he's kind of making it work. So, uh, you know, big, big, big props to Shorty G for that. He's doing... Uh, He's, he's making this gimmick work for him. And he really did take Sheamus to the limit. Sheamus got the victory, but, uh, sure, you know, Shorty looked fantastic. Um, definitely looked like somebody that you do not take take lightly and came close to beating Sheamus on a couple of different occasions. So, uh, after that, on the kickoff show, we had the United States Championship match between Andrade and Humberto Carrillo. If I'm mispronouncing that, I apologize. My Spanish is horrendous. Um, so this was this was good, and of course, uh, I I enjoy I really do enjoy Humberto's style, despite the fact that I'm not the biggest fan of uh, high flying. But he he's very crisp. Uh, in a lot of ways, reminds me of a of a, of a young Eddie Guerrero. Um, and this match was fantastic. Andrade did retain the United States Championship, uh, which makes sense. Humberto really seems like he would be a um, uh, a really good babyface for the chase. So this is the babyface that's going to chase and chase and chase and chase. And yes, eventually he will get the prize. But for a babyface like him, the money is most definitely in the chase. So the first match to open up the main card was Roman Reigns versus Baron Corbin in a Falls Count Anywhere match. Gonna level, gonna level with you. I didn't actually watch this match. I took this opportunity to get up and do a couple of things that I needed to get done that night and I came back and saw the very end of it which saw Roman Reigns winning the Falls Count Anywhere match. I knew Roman was gonna win. They, they built it up for Roman to win. I really wasn't interested in watching him win, so I kind of skipped this one. But that's what happened. Roman won that match. So, then we went into the Women's Royal Rumble, which the placement of Royal Rumble matches is, is always uh, interesting. Because, you know, if you have a Rumble match after you have championship matches, um, it we've seen it before. We've seen people, you know... They, they didn't get the job done against champion, so they turn around and they go into the Rumble match and then they win. Yeah, we didn't get any of that this time because the Rumble match was before the championship matches. Um, and the Royal, the Women's Royal Rumble match had, it, it had, uh, it had a lot of women from NXT this year. Like when we went into the match, I think there was only like seven women from, from Raw or SmackDown who had announced that they were going to be in it. Um, and, and we got, we got a lot of people from NXT in the Women's Rumble match. Um, you know, people like Candice LeRae, Io Shiroi, um, what are some others? Bianca Belair came in at, at number two. Um, you know, to start things off with Alexa Bliss, who came in at number one. Um, number 30 was Shayna Baszler. And, you know, Shayna, I know I didn't do a prediction video, but... You know, a level with you. Shayna was my pick. Like, uh, and Shayna is who I thought would and should win the women's rumble. Uh, alas, she did not. Uh, but she did come in and clean house and look like an absolute wrecking crew. And um, it looked like she was going to win. It came down to her and Charlotte Flair. Uh, you know, Charlotte Flair got the victory. Whether or not Charlotte's going to go on to face Becky or go on to face Bailey, I don't know for sure. If I had to guess, I would say it'll be Charlotte versus Becky. Um, 
just because they've got this whole thing going on with Bailey and Lacey Evans. So, um, yeah, no. So, Charlotte Flair wins the Women's Royal Rumble. I know some people are upset by that. Uh, I've seen, I've seen varying, uh, varying responses online. Some people being like, yes, my queen. Some people being like, no, it's Roman with tits. Um... I'm gonna be honest. I'm kind of in the middle. I don't. I don't care. You know, like um, I don't. I don't dis. I don't dislike Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte's great. She's very, she's very good uh, in the ring. She's a very good wrestler. Uh, great character. And uh, I'm. Her success doesn't bother me whatsoever. Um, you know, I, I kind of expect it. I mean, th they definitely want to get her. To the point where she either matches or uh, exceeds her father's title record. So they they want to get this this woman to be a six time sixteen time if not seventeen time champion. Uh, you know, so I, I kind of expect this. And you know, to be fair, um, they have. Traditionally speaking, women, uh, female wrestlers' careers don't last as long as ma male wrestlers' careers, so they might be doing things a little faster for her, because you never know. We don't know how long she wants wants to do this. And at some point, she may decide that she wants to, you know, stop bumping and start family. You know, we, we've seen that before. We've seen the Bellas do it. We've seen Mickey James do it. Now, in the case of somebody like Mickey James, Mickey came back after. Charlotte could do that. I don't know. But I, I get the feeling that there's a little bit of a rush on getting Charlotte to that 16-time uh, women's champion mark. But that's just my feeling on it. But uh, not upset by it whatsoever. We then went into the SmackDown Women's Championship match. Bayley uh, versus Lacey Evans. Uh, this was a good match. I, I really enjoyed this match. I really did. Um person I wanted to win did not win. Lacey did not capture the SmackDown Women's Championship. Bailey did retain, unfortunately. Uh, but on the upside, maybe this means we get uh, Lacey gets a big moment at WrestleMania. I do think that Lacey is going to uh, is going to get her hands on the women's title this year. I think it'll be early this year, but uh, if I'm wrong about that, I would guarantee that by the end of the year, Lacey Evans is a women's champion. Then we had the strap match between The Fiend and Daniel Bryan. I got one question. What happened to the red light? What happened to the red light? That was like a thing in all The Fiend's matches. And now it's not. Like, what happened to the red light, damn it? Um, but in either case... Um, Daniel Bryan had this amazing idea. Oh, yeah, I'll strap myself to the big scary monster, man. That'll beat him. <laughs> Not so much. Daniel came out of there looking like a freaking, oh, God. Like, he looked like a zebra. He had so many freaking stripes on him after all that, getting whipped by that strap so many damn times. Um... A fiend, a fiend retains. Um, now, to be fair, this probably was the best showing um, we'd seen against the fiend of you know anybody trying. There was a few times when it looked like the fiend might be in trouble, but then again, he's wearing a mask. You can't actually tell what his expressions are to tell whether or not he thinks he's in trouble. Um, the fiend mask never looks like it's in trouble, so go figure. Um, the Fiend did defeat Daniel Bryan. Oh, I don't think that Daniel's the person to take the Universal title off The Fiend. Now, that being said, I don't know who it is. But I don't think it's Daniel. Uh, I'm interested to see what happens next with The Fiend. Uh, considering the whooping that Daniel just took, I don't think that it's going to be uh, him again. Now, we do have Elimination Chamber coming up. I would really like for The Fiend to defend the Universal title in the Elimination Chamber match. That could be cool. Um, and, to be fair, it's, it's a way to, uh, you know, 
it is a way that if they really wanted to get the belt off the fiend while protecting him, they could. I mean, just let's let's fantasy book this for a second. So we got the fiend. Uh, We'll say Daniel Bryan. We'll say Roman Reigns. We'll say Randy Orton. Um, who else is a heavy hitter on SmackDown? Um, Drawing a blank. Well, screw it. Put John Cena in the Elimination Chamber match. I know they probably won't do that, but... Anyways, I'm trying to think of this. Uh, Fiend, Daniel, Roman. <clears throat> the point I was getting to, my brain is not working. I should have had a cup of coffee. Uh, the point I was getting is to is you're going to have a sequence where the Fiend takes every other competitor's finish. Okay? And then you, and then you can... You could have him get pinned. You could have him get eliminated. You could. Or you could have him kick out of that. Uh, either way, you're, you know, you're, you're, protect you're protecting him if you beat him. And you're, uh, you're just making him look all that much stronger if you don't. So um, I really would like to see The Fiend in the Elimination Chamber. And not just because the Elimination Chamber is one of my favorite match types. Um, we then went to uh, Becky versus Asuka. For the uh, Raw Women's Championship. <sighs> this was okay, I guess. Um, I mean, personally, I would have rather seen, much like the, the Lacey Bailey situation, I would have rather seen Asuka walk away with the championship. This whole the man gimmick has, um, I guess you'll say it's worn thin on me. Um, you know, I wasn't the biggest fan of it in the first place. Um, you know, I'm not. I don't really like the whole um, gender bender thing. And like I, I, I get it. Like I, I remember being annoyed because San, Santino Morella dressed up as Santina Morella for the uh, for uh, women's uh, battle royal, um, and he was in the he, he actually showed up for the women's rumble in a in a quote unquote comedy spot. Uh, but so the, the idea of Becky walking around calling herself the man. Uh, I, I thought it was, I don't know, a, a, a little, a little off, you know, because you're, you know, I actually liked what Rhonda had said to her, um, you know, because Rhonda Rousey had, had once told her in a promo, I didn't, you know, spend my life changing what it meant to fight like a girl for you to walk around and call yourself the man. Um, it, almost her calling herself the man is almost disrespectful to her gender um, and it's just it's just gotten a little old I'm they've done it to death I'm kind of, I'm kind of tired of it um, so that being said uh, Becky did retain uh, Oscar was not able to get her with the green mist I'm not the biggest fan of how they've been using the green mist either it's not consistent enough um, but neither neither here nor there. Becky does get the victory. And then we head into the main event, the Men's Royal Rumble match. This Rumble match was so good. All right, Brock starts it off. And, you know, Brock it, it, Brock's just eliminating people with ease as soon as they come out like Brock it's like freaking stone cold years ago where he's 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 the only one in the ring for you know moments at a time you know and uh, so he eliminates he eliminates he eliminates and <clears throat> one of the first people who lasts even a little bit in there is Kofi okay, Kofi Kingston comes in Kofi's trying to get vengeance for his eight second loss uh, to Brock Lesnar and then Ray Mysterio comes in, and so they're 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 trying to gang up on Brock, but Brock still, you know, he's still got the upper hand. And then here comes Big E. I wanted to see Big E nose to nose with Brock on his own. Uh, apparently, he did. He was not feeling himself enough to uh, to do that. So instead, him, Kofi, and Ray all attack at the same time. 
and they put a little bit of hurt on Brock, but Brock comes back, eliminates them all, and is once again standing tall. Um, and then we get a little bit more of that with the elimination after elimination after elimination. And then we got a moment I really wanted. We got Keith Lee come out. And, and, this, is, and this is where things start, started to change a little bit more. Because Keith Lee come out. And Keith goes nose to nose with Brock. And Brock's reactions are funny. Bro Brock's reactions are great. He's like, he sees Keith coming. <laughs> if you read lips, he's in the ring. He's going, oh, big boy. You know? <laughs> and, uh, friggin', so Keith Lee in there, friggin', just smashing it up with Brock Lesnar. And then here comes Braun. So now you got three of the Biggest people, three of the biggest guys in this match, in the match at the same time. Good, but, you know, Keith and Braun, they take their eye off of Brock. They start going after each other, and Brock dumps them both out. You know, again, showing that Brock isn't just the massive behemoth powerhouse. He's smart, too. He's not, you know, there's strategy in there. So, and then out comes Ricochet. And, uh, of course, Ricochet got kicked in the balls by Brock on Monday. Um, and Ricochet is getting ragdolled and everything else. And here comes Drew McIntyre. McIntyre and, and, and Lesnar stare down. And Ricochet kicks Brock in the balls. And Drew eliminates Brock with a Claymore kick. And the place went wild. Like, what a pop. Uh, as they should, because th th this was this was beautiful booking. You made Brock look unstoppable, and look what that did for the guy who stopped him. So good, it's so good. Okay, and then we go on. Now, as soon as Drew eliminated Brock, I was like, "That's my pick. That's the guy who's going to win the whole freaking thing." Okay, because it only makes sense that the person who eliminates Brock goes on to win so that he can go on and face Brock for the title. It is gold. So, but getting ahead of ourselves, Drew, he, con he continues to eliminate people. But now he's almost doing the Brock Lesnar thing because he takes his attention, puts his attention on the person long enough to eliminate them. But then he comes back to the, to, to the ropes and he's staring down Brock Lesnar again. Making it very clear that he wants a piece of Brock. And as Brock's leaving, you know, Brock's yelling at him, you're going to get it. So I am very much looking forward to a clash between Brock Lesnar and Drew McIntyre. Put that in the Mania main event. It's going to fucking rock. So, moving on from there. Um, I didn't write down the exact order that people came out in, but uh, we did see... Well, I. I I would be remiss if I didn't mention MVP. MVP had come in earlier and got eliminated by uh, by Brock Lesnar. Uh, you know, we we had Randy Orton come down, Roman Reigns come down, Sammy and Kevin come down. Um, Edge came out. Edge was in in the Royal Rumble match. Great return for Edge. AJ Styles. Edge actually uh, a AJ landed um, poorly off a spear from Edge. And uh, which actually resulted in AJ seemingly being injured, possibly a shoulder injury. Um, and he, he got um, eliminated. I believe he was eliminated early because of his injury. So hopefully AJ is all right. But Edge was in the match. Great moments. Great moments. We, we, we saw uh, a reun reuniting of rated, uh, rated RKO, which was cool. Um, Seth came down to the ring. He was number 30. Uh, Buddy Murphy and AOP were not in the match, but they were. They did come down to ringside and were, um, you know, very, very <clears throat> uh, instrumental in Seth's success in the Rumble, uh, causing the eliminations of Aleister Black, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, uh, before he himself uh, ending up getting eliminated, he he got eliminated because his allies were um, having the ringside brawl with their prospective enemies, <clears throat> so they weren't there to help him anymore, and he got eliminated. Case in point, this came down to uh, 
it came down to three people in the ring at the end of it all. It came down to Drew, Roman, and Edge, which, oh, way to go, Edge. Good for you. Um, and they had, uh, they had some, uh, some physicality between Edge and Roman there, with Edge actually getting the upper hand when it came to uh, the, the Battle of the Spears, which, you know, great for Edge, awesome. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I don't like Roman. It, it really was awesome. It was great to see Edge in the ring again. Um, but Roman ends up eliminating Edge. And then it's just Roman and Drew. And I was concerned that we were going to see Roman win the Rumble. But he didn't. Drew McIntyre wins the Royal Rumble. Drew McIntyre will go on to WrestleMania, and I have no doubt in my mind it is Brock Lesnar that Drew McIntyre will go on to face uh, for the WWE Championship. Where does that leave the Fiend and the Universal Champion? I don't know. Um, the Elimination Chamber will probably help us figure that out. But in the meantime, this... This pay-per-view was one of the few I could actually say I was excited for leading into it in a long time. And it did not disappoint. Great show. Great way to start off the year. If they continue the year with this kind of energy, it's going to be one of the best years in the WWE that we have seen in forever. So, this was great. Uh, this, this is a freaking, you know... A scale, you, if I give it a scale of 1 to 10, this pay-per-view's got to be, you know, an 8 or a 9. Um, I, I, I won't go as strong as to say a 10. There were still things I didn't like, but that's, you know, you can't, you're not always going to get everything you want. But just the Men's Royal Rumble match alone was enough to put this thing in, in contention for best, best Rumbles and best pay-per-view in years. So... That being said, I am Ken Carnage, and until next time, ladies and gents, my Carnage Cravers, Carnage, it's right around the corner.